And we're live guys, welcome to another episode of Good Morning Crypto, only here, only on Ivan on Tech. We are of course broadcasting live straight out of Stockholm, Sweden, and we do this show each and every day at 8 a.m. Central European Summertime, guys. I come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. And today we have so much to discuss because the story with Binance is continuing and turns out it is way more complicated than we first uh, thought because you know that yesterday we covered this KYC issue with Binance, the fact that hundreds and hundreds of KYC pictures, basically people holding their passport or their ID on camera, have been leaked on Telegram. And so today we will be continuing that story because apparently it turns out that Coindesk has been communicating with the hacker for months. And we actually have private messages between the hacker and Binance. And it actually turns out that the hacker was blackmailing. Binance and basically he wanted to have 300 Bitcoin not to release the information. We also have way more information about how the hack actually happened and the different versions of this story. So guys, I think you will learn so much in this video in regards to this particular situation. Also, we do have official response by Binance and we will be taking everything step by step and taking a look at what actually happened. So that is going to be number one. Number two, we're going to discuss the topic of Bitcoin, of gold and stocks, because you know that we're living in very interesting times where Bitcoin is soaring. We do have gold soaring as well, while stocks are uh, are having a bit of a downturn. So we're entering a whole new economy. We're entering a whole new phase in our economy. And this is also something that we're going to discuss. But guys, this is amazing times to be here. Amazing times to be in crypto, amazing times to be actually in an age where you can do financial moves because it I mean imagine if you were like 10 years old today and you couldn't even buy a Bitcoin sometimes I think about that because when you're young you you miss so many opportunities imagine if you were young during the dot-com bubble and you could not buy any of the tech stocks so really sometimes I think about the fact how lucky we are that we are of age and we're actually able to make moves in this fantastic markets but anyway I want to welcome everyone welcome Merdad welcome Tony welcome Robert M. Welcome Crypto Coatings. Welcome Fabrice. What is going on, Fabrice? We see uh, t Terror Vish. Uh, yeah, uh, welcome you. Uh, Crypto Mania. Welcome, welcome everyone. Be sure to smash that like. Number two, be sure to smash that bell button. And of course, let me know what you're drinking because I'm drinking black coffee. No milk and no sugar involved. First of all, let's look at the markets. I do think we have an interesting situation in the markets because if you look at the uh, top 20 cryptocurrencies, I mean, even top 10, the one that is performing the best is actually Binance Coin, 8%. So congratulations to everyone holding Binance Coin. And that is despite the fact that they have had a very difficult week. This week has not been easy for Binance in any way, but still they are outperforming any other coin in the top 10. Then we do see Bitcoin at 2.3%, very good. Uh, then we see Binance Coin, we see Tether 0.21%, and then uh, nothing has really hap happened except that. Big winners, first coin, 54%. Wow, 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 be careful, guys, with that. Uh, then we have um, uh, IOS, we have uh, ODEM, not a lot of big winners, to be honest. We have some losers, Lisk, U Network, Egressia, Hypercash, Nash Exchange. And by the way, Decentralized Exchange, just like Nash Exchange and others, are really, really needed in these times, especially when we're talking about uh, everything that is happening in central exchanges and all of the mistakes, all of the hacks that have and will be happening. Because at the end of the day, when we, we do have centralized entities and centralized honeypots, such as Binance, this will continue. And it's not like it's Binance's fault only. It is just the nature of our industry that we're so young and so many people are still trying to figure out how to build a sustainable business. And if the largest exchange can be hacked, such as Binance, uh, imagine what the small exchanges can be, uh, in what situations they can end up uh, in, in the near future. So definitely something to keep in mind. Also, guys, don't forget, we do have a limited offer on Bybit. You can get $110 for free if you sign up until August the 15th and you deposit 0.2 Bitcoin. So here you can short, you can long, you can do leverage. Definitely use this opportunity. And that being said, we're ready to get into the actual story. So just a small recap. Yesterday we discussed the fact that um, a, a hacker published hundreds and hundreds of images on Telegram of Binance KYC users with their ID and everything. Uh, we also got a statement from Binance. It was 
during the live stream uh, that um, uh, I got a statement from Lia Li from the Binance PR team and after the stream Binance published this. This is the official statement from Binance, and they're actually saying that we would like to inform you that an unidentified individual has threatened and harassed us, demanding 300 Bitcoin in exchange for withholding 10,000 photos that bear similarity to Binance KYC data. And also they say, if you have any information about who that is, who that person is who published the images yesterday, and who that person is who is threatening Binance and extorting Binance for 300 Bitcoin, you can get uh, 25 Bitcoin as a bounty if you help them find this person or group of people. And so I read this uh, official statement yesterday and I thought, all right, this is probably the end of the story because probably we will not get any more information. And probably this is the end of this whole, uh, of this whole incident that this person published the images and that's it. But then Coinbase released, um, not Coinbase, Coindesk released a whole report on the situation and apparently they have been in touch with the hacker and apparently they also have a lot of um, uh, private messages between the hacker and Binance. So this is really what I want to focus on today. And the story goes like this. It all started during the hack in May. You know that in May, 7,000 uh, Bitcoin were stolen from Binance. And this is really where this whole situation uh, started. And this anonymous person that is called Bnatov Platon, uh, he reached out to Binance and said that uh, he has a lot of KYC information. And the KYC information actually comes from this hack back in May because the hackers were able to get the Bitcoin, but also they were able to hack a lot of sensitive information such as KYC, according to the hacker. This is according to the hacker. And he basically said that he then hacked the hackers. <laughs> so this is the story of, of Bnat of Platon, that he hacked the hackers who hacked Binance back in May and uh, now he has all of that information and now he has all of these KYC images. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. And then he says, this this um, person, uh, Platon, who hacked the hacker and has all the information, he says to Binance, hey, look at me. I'm a good guy. I'm actually a very good guy. I'm, I'm a white hack hacker and I can help you get those guys. I can help you put them to justice and I can help you find them. But, but you need to pay me 300 Bitcoin. <laughs> and by the way, if you don't pay me, I will release all that information. So so this is what he claimed, and I think it is so funny because he said that he's a white white hat hacker, and um, uh, and and he's doing everything in order to catch the bad people. But you know, as as a reward, he wants 300 Bitcoin, and if he doesn't get it he will publish all, all the information. So also, according to this hacker, the way this hack happened back in May was that an insider at Binance uh, was involved and an insider basically built some kind of a backdoor. And they also have a snippet of code here below. Let me show you if we scroll down here. Yeah, so here they show a snippet of a Java code that um, basically takes two parameters, the uh, URI, basically the um, UR URI of the API of Binance, and and um, then also the user ID. So basically with this code, apparently they were able to get the user, uh, the uh, API key of uh, a user ID. So you give any user ID and you get their API key, uh, ap apparently, apparently. So th this is the code that was also shared with Coinbase, uh, Coindesk by that anonymous guy. And so uh, he started to negotiate with Binance. He started to negotiate with Binance, trying to get 300 Bitcoin bouncy for his uh, work, you know, for for his as his bounty, but the negotiations um, broke down because Binance did not want to pay. They said, "Hey, we're not dealing with any extortion. So either you you give us that information and you delete those photos, uh, because either way we're not gonna pay you, or you can release them basically." Because negotiations broke down, so I guess they were like, "Okay, we're not paying you. Do whatever you want." So all in all, he claims that he has 60,000 pieces of KYC information in his collection. And yeah, th these are some of the images that were leaked yesterday on that Telegram group. I'm not sure that the Telegram group is still there because so many people reported it to Telegram and I think it was removed. Um, but nonetheless, we do have um, this person also having a website and really the images were on the website first and then on Telegram group. And all in all, he says that his motivation is all about getting the bad 
bad guys, but also he, he says he needs 300 Bitcoin or he, he will publish the information. Anyway, and 300 Bitcoin is 3 million approximately, 3 million dollars. Uh, and, and here we have some private conversation between Ted Lin, which is um, one of the people on Binance, and Platon. And all in all, Ted Lin says that given the damage from your FUD campaign is already done, whatever bunch you were you, you were asking for, uh, we will give you significantly less because the damage is already done. As I said, we don't react to extortions, but we're willing to get more information relating to perpetrators if you have useful information. So he's talking about the perpetrators that Pla Platon uh, allegedly hacked to, to, get, <laughs> to get the KYC information that he then later himself published because Binance did not pay him. And um, all in all, uh, here is where negotiation broke down and Ted said, hey, let me know if you have any information or if you change your mind, but basically we're not paying you because we're not reacting to extortion, but we could give you some information if you give us um, some payment, if you give us inf information about the perpetrators, but that 300 Bitcoin extortion that you're doing, forget it, forget it. Uh, and then he, uh, this guy went on Twitter and yeah, he said uh, that uh, he, they could have prevented it. If, if they just paid him. So all in all, this is the state of the story. Uh, the official Binance response is here. And um, uh, I mean, definitely something to keep in mind that many people said yesterday that it is FUD. And uh, basically they were saying that this whole situation is FUD because it is old from, uh, you know, from February, that the KYC information is old. But in my view, this is very serious because at the end of the day, even, the, uh, even if the KYC information is old, we've never seen this before, that somebody published publishes hundreds and hundreds of, um, of pictures of people holding their passports. And all in all, this is also very real because Binance is actually offering you uh, a bounty to find this guy. So uh, when people say that this is FUD, I don't agree. I, I don't agree that this is FUD. Just because the KYC information is old doesn't mean that this is FUD. To me, this is serious. But let me know if you agree or, or, or you disagree because, I mean, you need to have some humor as well. And you, you cannot really, you cannot not see humor in this <laughs> because this guy claiming that he's a white hacker, then claiming that he wants 300 Bitcoin and publishes all the information, it is hilarious. And with all situations in crypto, there is always a perspective of humor. And this is why this industry is so hilarious sometimes, really. This industry is the most hilarious, the most exciting, and also the most rewarding industry of them all. But anyway, guys, if any of you have any information about the guy Platon that we just discussed, be sure to let Binance know by opening a support ticket at support.binance.com. You, you might be getting 25 Bitcoin if they catch if they cash him. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Typhoon says in the comments, staged, staged, staged. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe staged. Uh, look, we don't even know if, if this um, uh, story that Coin, Coindesk reports, I mean, whether the information they got is completely accurate. I mean, it's all, you know, different pieces of information, different people saying different things. And at the end of the day, the victims in all of this are the users that see their information being leaked on Telegram. That, that is the most sad part that, you know, the victims here are basically you and I who use these services. And then you do see this whole uh, story unveiling itself. And while it's very fun to follow it and see what happens, it's also extremely tragic. And it really shows you why we are so early on and why at the end of the day, KYC is a double-edged sword. And whenever somebody tells you that, hey, KYC is extremely necessary, this and that, which all regulators tell you, and uh, sooner or later, all exchanges will, in my view, have to have KYC, even BitMEX, even Bybit, they will have to implement it, or they will really see a lot of legal trouble. But the other side of the argument is, of course, that look at this. I mean, is this the situation we want to have with KYC? What kind of middle ground is there? Can we have decentralized KYC? Let's solve it in a way that makes sense. Because with all of these uh, young firms, I mean, even Binance, the biggest exchange in crypto, but still it's so young, it's just a few years, like one, like two years, two years old. Uh, with all of these um, businesses being so young, they don't have experience handling that sensitive information. So all in all, uh, it, it is just the beginning, guys. I think, we, unfortunately, we will see more of these attacks because if the biggest exchange is having these issues, imagine the, the small exchanges. They might not be as big of a honeypot for, for hackers, but still, but still, but still, but still. 
Now, something that I really want to cover is this metric from placeholder VC. It is about Ethereum, and I actually saw it on Louis Thomas' channel uh, yesterday. I thought it was very interesting. Basically, now, now we're switching topics completely. Now we're switching topics completely. And let me know what you think, guys, in the chat about the Binance topic. And soon we will get into the AMA, Q&A, and we will talk uh, more in the chat. But before that, I just want to cover this quickly. This is um, basically a VC firm publishing their metric of valuing tokens and valuing tokens on um, when it comes to smart contract platforms and they're basically comparing the <laughs> <laughs> for five uh, fifty thousand pounds of tuna, I will nice man, nice man. T tuna is a lot of protein, but basically, what he's comparing here is the price of the native assets such as Ethereum compared to the price of all the tokens built on a smart contract platform such as Ethereum. And then he's comparing different platforms such as Ethereum and the price of Ether compared to all the tokens. Then he compares uh, to EOS, the price of EOS compared to all the tokens on EOS. And um, basically, he says that Ethereum is undervalued because the price of the of the native token is quite small compared to the price of all the tokens built on top of Ethereum. While on platforms such as EOS and others, the price of the native currency is much larger compared to the, the price of all the tokens. So, hey, I, I think it's an interesting metric, but at the same at the same time, it could also signal that Ethereum is, is actually, that all the other tokens are actually overvalued compared to, their, to, to the tokens built on top. So, for example, EOS might be overvalued valued compared to the uh, all the all, all the cryptocurrencies built on top of it because ethereum is still the biggest cryptocurrency when it comes to smart contracts and when it comes to being this programmable platform so in my view the price discovery on ethereum should be more efficient than on eos and others so while it is not a you know 100 uh, pr percent proven metric something to keep in mind the nvtv ratio na network value to token value uh, then also, I wanted to mention this, uh, this topic about gold, Bitcoin and stocks. Because we do see gold really, really performing well. I think we reached uh, 1500 for uh, for gold and uh, really if you look at the let me actually pull it up uh, gold price if you look at the performance during the past uh, uh, weeks and really months it, it's it's very good because uh, the markets are starting to lose faith in um, let's see l let's take like two years yeah you see so uh, if you look over two years the price of gold is really performing extremely well and we're now at uh, 1500 per one um, uh, ounce and uh, the markets are losing faith in equities and obviously then everyone is starting to find a safe haven such as gold or bitcoin or crypto or whatever but also i thought this very interesting interview with um, ron paul where he was talking about the fact that hey gold is fantastic but at the same time it is lacking in freedom because during the great depression people also thought okay let's move away from equities into gold gold being this safe haven and they thought that gold is what will protect them against the situation until the government came and said okay, you cannot have gold, we will confiscate all of it. This actually happened in the US, that government forbid people to hold gold. It's, it's insane to think that, you know, land of the free, America, and now the government comes and says to you what you can and you cannot own. And uh, you owning gold, it's not like it harms anyone. So it's not like you, you, you're holding some kind of, you know, uh, dangerous stuff at home that you can harm your neighbors with. It's gold. So... So it actually surprised me when I learned about this a few years ago that even in the US you had these draconic measures. I mean, even if sometimes it, it feels like communism where the government comes and tells you, you cannot hold this, we will now take your gold and nobody can hold gold. So really Bitcoin is a lot more about freedom. And I, I thought this comment was brilliant and, and it's definitely something to keep in mind because at the end of the day, gold is fantastic, but it can be confiscated, keep that in mind. And it can be confiscated even in in Western countries such as um, uh, such as the U.S. because it it happened in the f in the past. All right, 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 guys, 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 guys. Let's go to the chat. I love the chat. You're fantastic. Also, I want to mention this quickly. This is a problem, by the way. This is a big problem that if you are a Bitcoin investor and you do have tax authorities after you and you want to pay, like you do want to pay, you're, you're like, okay, I'm selling my crypto. I'm paying paying you guys the taxes, but the issue is the banks might refuse <laughs> refuse your deposits so if you have some funds on coinbase or kraken or whatever you have and now you need to transfer them to your bank in order to pay your taxes guess what 
the bank might say we do not accept crypto deposits very interesting extremely interesting uh, i actually didn't think about this issue like in regards to taxes but you see israeli bitcoin investors can't pay taxes as banks refuse deposits and then the tax authorities i mean the good thing is according to this article at least the tax authorities seem to to uh, be understanding in this particular case with the israeli uh, traders because uh, normally the tax authorities they don't care i mean uh, your your deadline is here and if you do not pay until this deadline we will come after you we will take your house we will probably sell your house and uh, then uh, you will f probably you will figure it out but until then maybe we've already sold all your assets and yeah uh, th that is how they usually do it <laughs> but in this case they they seem to be a bit understanding so th this is uh, yeah so the tax authorities are aware of the problem but they say the ball isn't in their court uh, but all, all in all i got the impression that the um, the tax authorities at least were a bit understanding that's super super comical of this yeah 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 exactly exactly so establishment says we don't accept crypto deposits but you somehow need to figure out how to pay taxes <laughs> Ivan, what about Rolex watches? Can they confiscate that? Uh, I, I, I have, don't have a clue about Rolex watches, guys. Uh, look, they might be a good store of value. Might, maybe, maybe. But I, I just have zero clue about it. <clears throat> of course, they can confiscate it. But uh, this is a, an asset class that I think is interesting if you understand it. But I have no, no clue. I have a friend that uh, uh, I meet with sometimes. So we, we're talking business always. He is into Rolex watches. So he knows a lot uh, about different ones. But I have no no clue. I mean, if I am to buy a Rolex watch, I will not even be able to recognize what is real and what is not real. And that is, by the way, why I don't really like I don't like this um, store of value in art. Because there's no way for me to know if it's fake or not fake. I mean, the fakes today, they look so good, you won't even notice the difference. So for, for me to, you know, go there and look at Rolex, at paintings, uh, I, I have no clue. So therefore, I cannot tell you if it is good or not or uh, yeah. But l let me know if you if you understand that better. That is why blockchain is needed. So you, sh you can check the ownership, you can check the origin, you can check the provenance. That, that is the beautiful thing with blockchain. Probably it will revolutionize art to such an extent that even I feel more compelled to, to have art and to use it as a store of value. But who knows? Who knows? BNB finished soon. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, really, I, I don't think Binance will be affected by what is happening right now in the long term. Look at Binance coin, 8.6%. So um, I, I think Binance is such a strong player that long term they won't be affected. But yes, short term, it of course hurts. This this bad um, news flurry hurts, of course. Ivan, what is your favorite food? Steak. Steak, 100%. I don't eat, uh, like I eat a lot of stuff, but steak is my favorite one. Some people say pizza. I, I don't really understand understand it some people say hey my favorite food is pizza but it's like 50 percent bread well, why would you want that it, it pizza maybe is one of the biggest scams in food because you understand that it's 50 percent bread then they give you tomato sauce which is very cheap and then they put like a few a few grams like i don't know in in the u.s what, what is the like small measurement of weight but they put like a few grams of meat on top and you should enjoy it no 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 G give me meat give me steak okay Hey, Ivan, uh, just wondering, has anyone attempted uh, to hack you? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. We, we did not have any issues. So, you know, uh, uh, do you do this? When you say something and uh, it's good and you don't want it to happen? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> pizza. Yeah. I, I don't agree, man. I don't agree, man. Meat and potato. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Eastern Europe. In Eastern Europe, we only eat meat and potatoes. <laughs> Question. Any updates on resistance? They would be... Uh, absolutely. I, I do think so. So uh, our our um, uh, advising with resistance is done because we were all mostly working on the technology and technology is done. The mainnet is released. So the atomic swaps working very, very well. Everything is working extremely well. And uh, now it's up to the team to take it further. I mean, the biggest challenge they have now is to to get listed but uh, uh, if you saw like the statement they make they did not prolong our our advising and, and i think because uh, the technology is done and we really did did our our uh, our job there uh fabrice is angry angry rage pizza if you make it good it's an art and amazing why do you 
<laughs> no, no, no. I I'm just saying that, you know, it's bread and it's tomato sauce. That that's all. That's all. <laughs> and I want something more, more real. You see, I, I want real food. Like Bitcoin is real asset. It is real value. I also want real food. But <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it personally. You see, Fabrice is enraged. He's enraged. <laughs> Sushi is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, but also it's a bit of a scam, to be honest with you. It's uh, like 80% rice, and then it's like a small, a small piece of fish. Uh, I, I, I do like fish, I do like salmon, but sometimes I also feel like sushi is a bit of a scam because, or sometimes they put like, you know, vegetable, like um, cucumber, a lot of rice and a bit of cucumber, a and you pay uh, $20 for that, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 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 definitely something to keep in mind. Italians put nice, 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 nice. Surströmi. <laughs> Actually, I've never tried it. I've never tried it. So we moved to Sweden 2006, and uh, yeah, I've never tried it. And uh, I also know many Swedes who never tried it. But yes, sounds. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've seen. I've seen. You know, German people try it. Uh, I, I think it was d during a German lesson in in high school here in Sweden. We just saw German people try it. They ha they had to go in uh, outside and open it outside. And yeah, 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 yeah. Everything is a scam. <laughs> pizza, <laughs> pizza and sushi uh, exit scam. Yes, indeed. It is a scam. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Anyway, guys. Anyway, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this. Be sure to smash the like. Ivan exposes the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, I, I, there are many scams in food. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Enjoy your Thursday. Make the most out of it. And goodbye, guys. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Smash the like, smash the bell. Let me once again shield my affiliate link for Bybit, by the way. D don't forget to click on my link, guys. That, that is the most important thing also. If you are to use Bybit, if you are to trade with leverage, if you are to do these things with B uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, XRP, click on my Bybit link. You can can get $110 for free if you do it until 15th of August. So yeah, uh, it, it, this is my shilling of the link. Absolutely important. Support the channel. Go click now. I'll see you all tomorrow at 8 a.m. So have a good day, great day, and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.